It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. Welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal, everybody. I'm host Mike Adams, sitting in the cabin tonight with Dan DeFaw. Before we get started, we want to help you save some money. That's right, folks. Uh, don't forget to use our promo codes to save that money. And let's start off with BuckBaits.com. That's right, the brick-and-mortar store of BuckBaits down at Sterling Heights, Michigan at 15 and Dodge Park. Go over there. If you're on the website, BuckBaits.com, use the promo code UNJ20. That will give you 20% off your order. For those of you who are looking for Easy Cut products, make sure you go to EasyCutProducts.com. And when you're there, use the UNJ promo code UNJ15 off to save 15% off your order. And let's not forget Lincoln Roan over at Packermax.com. It's never too early, never too late to think about the Packermax. Go on over to Packermax.com, use the promo code UNJ25. That'll give you $25 off your order over at Packermax Outdoor. For those of you looking for some new firearms and firearm products, make sure you go over to the islandarmory.com. While you're there shopping, use the promo code UNJ25. J10 to save 10% off your order there. If you shot that bird of a lifetime and you want it mounted, don't forget Troublesome Creek Taxidermy. We've had them live on the show. We've talked to them. Uh, you want to get 10% off your order, go to Facebook, go to troublesome.creek.7, find their website. If you go to our website, UNJ, make sure to click on the button to download the form. You get 10% off over there using the code UNJ10. Looking for that game call, whether it be a squirrel, whether it be goose, duck, deer, make sure you go to JP. JPO Game Calls. Look for them at jpogamecalls.com. And while you're there shopping, use the UNJ10 promo code to save 10% off your order. And Miller Deer Tracking, the man that seems to never sleep during deer season, get 20% off your next deer tracking uh, using the promo code UNJ20. Look for Miller Deer Tracking on Facebook or give him a call over at 810-240-4891. Looking for the hottest new plastics to take on the water, whether it be hard water or soft water, make sure you go over to southernindianabaitco.com. While there, use the UNJ promo code UNJ10 to save 10% off your order. Deer Camp Coffee, folks. We drink it every night on the show. You want to try it? You can go to the brick and mortar store at 15 and Dodge Park at Deer Camp itself or go to DeerCampCoffee.com. Also use our promo code UNJ10. You get 10% off your order. And don't forget, get a bag of the UNJ Medium Roast Blend there as well. All right, Danny. Where's our live view camera look from tonight? Welcome back to a live episode of Up North Journal this Wednesday night as we take a live downtown look into Newberry where it's a balmy 37 degrees with mixed precipitation. Hello, UP of Michigan. Hello, Mike. Hey, Dan, what's going on? Where are we looking at? This looks very yeah, familiar. Yeah, we're looking downtown Newberry. Obviously, thinking about pizza and coffee. Yeah, over at Cedars. Right? I Big think. shout out to Deer Camp Coffee. And I have, I'm using, you're letting me use the Swamp Buck drink holder today, and you got Deer Camp. Yeah, we, we are drinking Deer Camp. We have wall hanger tonight. So it's a little cool up here in Michigan, or in southern Michigan. Our guests up in the uh, Upper Peninsula right now who are sitting in the wings, probably a little colder up there than it is down here. But I still, I had to make some coffee tonight because it is a little chilly here. Right? So. Uh, you know, we talked about it last week that we were going to have on... Uh, we started a partnership with the UP Press up north, and every month, one show we're going to dedicate to some new people that we're going to interview that are going to be at the show in November. But right. before we get there, uh, a big shout out to Sarah Greenland. Found out this week she got a big promotion. She, she was in the advertising department who started our partnership, but she's now been uh, promoted to publisher of the Daily Press. Of the Daily Press. There you go. Congratulations. So now, let's jump right into it tonight. Danny, you ready? I'm ready. So let's go on up to the UP and talk to Morgan and Caitlin. You know, how you got girls doing tonight, but I will have to say, first of all, we feel kind of old. We've not, I don't know that we've interviewed two young ladies as young as they are on the show before. So <laughs> welcome to the show, ladies. Hi. <laughs> Good to have you on. So, uh, we're going to talk tonight about uh, the UP Ice Fishing and Hunting Expo specifically, uh, and Morgan is the event coordinator over at Visit Escanaba, and Caitlin is 
the owner of Beaver Lures. There you go. So Big shout out to Adam Wynn, who I do believe he has some in his tackle box from this past season. I do believe so. And as soon as we see him check in here with us, we'll, right. uh, we'll probably be getting some questions from him tonight. So, yeah. Uh, But, yeah, so welcome to the show, ladies. Um, glad you're with us. How is the weather up there? I know last week we talked to, uh, it was beautiful down here. It was beautiful up there. Uh, so how's the weather today? Snowy. <laughs> <laughs> Gloomy, snowy, cold. With All a right. little bit of wind. It is yeah. Michigan, right? <laughs> no, it's the UP, man. Well, well, I, I, does it ever get warm up there? Be honest. It was really nice, like, last weekend. 70s. Oh, it does get yeah. in the 70s up there. Okay. Oh, it gets 80. You're in trouble. Trust me. Those deer flies and black flies will carry you out of that woods. <laughs> All right. But, uh, Morgan, start with you with Visit Escanaba. You are the event coordinator. Uh, this show that we are having in November, the UP Ice Fishing Show, um, which is happening November 3rd through the 5th. Um, Tell us a little bit about what's going to be happening those days. You, This is your baby, I was told, so we're going to let you talk about your baby for a little while. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, this past year was the first annual Ice Fishing Hunting Expo, um, and it took place in October. This year, it, like you said, is happening uh, in the very beginning of November. And, um, yeah, last year there was, I want to say, maybe about 30 vendors and this year i'm expecting there to be a lot more but there was a good variety of people that showed up there were um fur trappers we had a lot of different lure makers uh we have a couple different ice fishing and fishing in general i guess um shops in escanaba gladstone delta county and uh they set up shop there i know you mentioned blades is going to be on your show they uh had quite a display there and a variety of different uh, ice shacks. So, yeah, it was uh, a really good turnout for the first year. You know, I remember when we, uh, uh, the, the the young man and woman who, who come up with this whole concept and talked about starting this show, when we talked to them, you know, they, they uh, said that they had people coming from downstate, coming up across the bridge. Uh, you know, y- y'all finally call us trolls. <laughs> We'll take that. We trolled our way up across the bridge and went over to Escanaba. But uh, they said that they had some from actually down in Detroit. They had, I think, some people from Wisconsin. Am I right, Danny? Yeah. So you, know, you, you were pulling from a, a big variety of people geographically and pulling them into the UP. How important is something like this for for that area, you know, to draw people in, for the locals? It's definitely important. Um, Upper Michigan is absolutely beautiful regardless of you know the crummy weather this time of year um there's tons to offer outdoors wise and to have something of this nature is perfectly fitting and there are a lot of outdoorsmen that aren't necessarily living in delta county or the up Mm -hmm. but um like you had said, Dan, uh, you live downstate and you travel all the way up here to go to camp. So I, I, um, I tell you what, there's nothing better for me than when I hit that Mackinac Bridge. When I, when I, when I start to head west on US two, it, it, it's a total different sensation. If anybody, and I find it shocking, and I still will find people who've never been to the UP, and if anybody's wanting to go to the UP, first off, call Danny. Well, don't do that. <laughs> You'll take you, you, you can actually go to visit Escanaba.com and check out all the things they have over in, by Escanaba. And, uh, but, yeah, if you've never been to the UP, whether it's the eastern end, Tuquamon Falls, or over by you in Escanaba there, uh, or over kind of where I'm at over in Crystal Falls, there's so much to see. But a good place to start is visit Escanaba.com. Right, Morgan? Yeah, we um, have really beautiful website i am specifically in charge of the event portion of it but uh we talk about the different parks and campgrounds hotels restaurants things to do in delta county and there's a lot happening this is a really beautiful area i moved here about two years ago and i'm already hook line and sinker in love with it you know for people that maybe not into just the hunting and fishing and like well, why would i go up there well there's there's kayaking there's canoeing uh, there's got to be some trails to hike up there as well. Uh, fall color tour 
is another thing. And I'm thinking about coming up and doing Lake in the Clouds for a week this year with my girlfriend. We're going to take the camper up. Um, you know, so there's a, snow skiing in the winter. So there, there's a lot more than just hunting and fishing. You know, and everybody goes, oh, Escanaba in the Moonlight. As much as I love that movie and find it dear to my heart, um, a lot of people kind of get that in their head. That's all there is to do. But Michigan offers so much more. Definitely. Yeah, all summer long and into the fall, we have farmers markets in Rapid River, Gladstone, and Escanaba multiple times a week. And all of the local farmers bring their produce in there. Um, there are a lot of people that have craft vendors make things like you know, knives and homemade bowls and um, quilts and things of that nature. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, it is. It, it is a really beautiful area. We have quite a few music festivals there's racing all summer long um one of the things i was really surprised moving to this area is how music heavy and race heavy it is here aside from the you know typical hunting fishing mm -hmm. of the up so when you talk about racing is that uh you're talking about, uh, automobiles or snowmobile or both um, both okay. all year round, honestly. So they have ice racing. They actually race out on the hard water, um, and that's with four wheelers and dirt bikes. Okay. They have snowmobile racing during the summertime. They race cars on tracks. Um, they, there's a lot of different, you know, ATV mud mud run type things. So, yeah, there's there's a lot going on for racing. That sounds like that's right my alley. I take Jeep up there. There you go. <laughs> There's a lot of car shows, too. Okay. Uh, right in the beginning of June, we have the Cruise and Classics coming up, which is a huge car show and really something to see if you're into that. There's a lot of stuff to do up there. Oh, there's a ton of things to do. And I bet you both of you girls will be busy the weekend of July 21 and 22 at the Northern Lights Music Fest. Yeah, I will definitely be working that weekend. Uh, I've been extremely busy we've got keith urban coming as our headliner to uh our first annual northern lights music festival so uh, yeah it'll be big it's uh we're expecting to sell fifteen thousand tickets and escanaba has a population of twelve thousand people so <laughs> i was gonna say that is, there's not that many people in town i don't think right <laughs> you know it'll be that... wild <laughs> And, and that's awesome. And, and like you said, we, you're the event coordinator for the UP Ice Fishing Show and Hunting Expo. But it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a show if you didn't have vendors. And 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 Caitlin Beaver, owner of Beaver's Lures, is on tonight. Caitlin, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. You are the owner of Beaver Lures, and you're pretty young. So you're going to have to give us a little background as to how this happened, because yeah, so. Uh... It's kind of one of those things that start out, started out as a hobby. Um, during like the year of COVID when that had first started, I didn't have school, I didn't have work, so I had a lot of free time on my hands. And we just did a lot of fishing. It was awesome. <laughs> we got to fish like every day. And then I picked up the hobby of making the fishing lures. And we would use them. I would started started to sell them to like friends and family and then it would kind of slowly started to spread i made a facebook page and then like one day i just had a bunch of orders and i was like you know i think i can make something of this so that's kind of i guess how it all started you know taking an idea of something a hobby or something you got lo a love for yeah. and then turning it into money that that's got to be the best job ever no matter what what it is if you got that kind of passion for it so uh explain a little bit when, when you say you you make the lures do you do you uh like buy the hooks and then the the, the fasteners to attach them to the blade or do you make the blades yourself how does that yes, all work so, so with all of our jigs we mold all of those um and then we'll paint them put the hooks on package um, and then our spoons, we do get those blanks, but then we do the whole um, airbrushing, hooks, packaging with those. Okay, one at a time. So these are hand, these are each individually hand done. Yeah. Yep. So we airbrush everything by hand. So you can honestly say there's no two alike. Correct. That right. is that is true. And legitimately, when you say handmade, yeah, they're handmade. obviously, like she said, the blanks. Yeah. But after that point, they're handmade and put together. That is awesome. Yeah, thank you. You know, we're, we're, we're browsing through your webpage right now, and, you know, like your casting spoons is like a, a purple one and another one that's got a blue to it. Uh, mm -hmm. 
you know, it, it's just uh, now I gotta ask you, everyone that you've come up with, obviously no two's alike. Have you tested all these out? Yeah. Yep. So we probably go fishing maybe like two times a week, maybe a little more than I should, but <laughs> but uh, you gotta test the product, right? <laughs> there you go. Absolutely. You, you, you know, you you gotta put your name. Well, you are putting your name behind your product. It's yeah. tested, so you gotta get out there and do it. But you know, yeah, we're, right now um, we've been fishing for like coho salmon and a steelhead brown trout. So I've been able to test out a lot of our new spoon colors this this spring. So that's been great. That's awesome. And and for those of you watching us on the live show, we've been kind of bruising cruising the website. And but also she has a Facebook page. Uh, Beaver lures, go over there, give her a like, share it over there as well. Uh, but as you see there, she's got some videos. She's actually got some of pictures. Uh, and we're going to get to this later in the show, but I'm just kind of showing the picture of something glowing. So it's going to be kind of cool. We want to dive into that one too. But uh, yeah, so obviously at the your young age, you're now a businesswoman in the community. Um, but it's going to be good to meet you up at the show. So I tell you what, we're going to come up on our first break. When we come back, how about we dive back into the UP Ice Fishing and Hunting Expo? All right, we're going to take a quick step outside, and we'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has reinvented the way you buy bows. From now on, you can make the most educated decision possible by basing your bow choice specifically on your shooting needs and goals. All you need to do is ask yourself, what kind of shooter am I? What do I want to achieve? PSE will help find the right category for you. So, what kind of shooter are you? Find out at PSEArchery.com. Welcome back, second segment of the show. We got some questions popping in already. Uh, Want to give a big shout out to Tim Sias from West Virginia. He calls it the best Virginia. I know uh, Whirly Bird would probably differ uh, on that opinion of which Virginia is actually best, but he's not here tonight to defend himself. So, But uh, Tim asks, what pattern would you recommend for trout? He didn't specify what kind of trout, though. Yeah, that's a good question. So my favorite for brown trout is probably our color pattern, Pinky. But we did come up with a new color pattern called um, Bumble Goby. Okay. Uh, and we did catch um, a 26-inch 26 26 26 <laughs> brown on it this year. So that was pretty awesome. That's a nice size yeah. brown. Danny's actually looking it up yeah. right now. See if we can find that one. What was it called? Bumble Goby. Bumble Goby. I don't, I don't see it out here. Uh, it's kind of more of like a natural pattern. So if you're fishing really clear waters, like Lake Superior, for example, that would be a good pattern to use. Okay. All right. And that's that's going to be for brown trout, or would that work for some of the other, like a rainbow or a brookie? Yeah, you could definitely use that for a rainbow trout as well. Okay. Um, Danny's yeah. actually on there. There you go. He's calling it up right now. Is it, is it got a brown, a couple black stripes to it with a white tail kind of thing? Yep. Yep, that's There's right. your bumble goby. There you go. So yeah. when, when when somebody comes to your website to order something, um, mm -hmm. do, do, can they order onesie, twosies, um, you know, or do you need to order, like have a, a certain amount uh, sold to be able to ship? Is it better to like buy, buy fives, tens? How does that all work? Yeah, so you could order one lure or you could order ten lures. Um, we do do free shipping with $50 orders, though. Okay. Right there at the top of the website. If you visit, remember people, uh, beaverlures.com, uh, free shipping on orders, $50 orders or more. So, so Tim, break that grant out, man. Spend 50 bucks. Right. Pry that thing out of your wallet. <laughs> so um, he said thank you for the information. So that's a good deal. Uh, now, on the website, so you get the patterns there. I'm new to the fishing scene, let's say, and I want to get something here for Michigan. I'm going to fish, you know, let's say I'm going to fish for brown trout. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm going to fish maybe the Asabo. I'm going to fish maybe one of the rivers up there by you. Um, maybe not not so much, you know, the bigger lakes or anything like that. Um, as far as you, I mean, obviously you got to check your regulations on, on what type of bait you can use. But if I'm going to order a, a lure from you, 
Um, where do I start with for trout? Because that's a popular fish to go for. Where do we start with sizing? How do we how do we determine what size we're going to get? Um, I would probably so I would probably go with the the two fifth ounce trolling spoon if you're going to be trolling. Um, we do have casting spoons, and I'd probably use the medium size casting spoon. Okay, so kind of uh, just a general broad range type size, kind of in the middle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All so. Right. And with the show coming up in November, you're going to have a booth there, and you're going to have a lot of these there? Yes. Yeah, so I'll have um, all of our current lures that we're selling, and then we're also going to be having some new sizes and color patterns here pretty soon. So we should have those available. Um, and, yeah, if anybody has, like, any questions, how to use something, uh, we could totally answer those for you at the show. Okay. All right. We plan to be there, so we will take you live on Facebook again, and we'll tell everybody about you. Morgan, speaking of coming up to the show, if we're traveling uh, and I want to know a place I can stay, where should I go? Well, I guess it depends. Uh, a lot of fishermen really enjoy staying right on the water, so um, I guess probably I would suggest... Sorry, I've got puppies in the background. That's yeah, okay. We um, love dogs. You can bring them on the show. We don't care. <laughs> so, so you've got you've got oh, lodging. You it, even I do believe when we talked to Sarah that you they even have campgrounds right on the the facilities there at the UP State Fair, right? Yeah. So, um, as far as hotels go, I would say Terrace Bay Hotel, or um, you could always stay at the Bayview Motel. Those are right on the water in the bay between Escanaba and Gladstone. So those are pretty good locations if you're wanting access directly to the water. Um, and then as far as campgrounds go, there's actually a campground by the mouth of the Escanaba River where that comes into the bay, and that's called Pioneer Park. And then um, there's campgrounds right on the fairgrounds uh, where the expo is taking place as well. Yeah, that, we found that out last time. I thought that was pretty cool. That was really cool. And uh, also, um, you're gonna, they're gonna, we're gonna have food there. Uh, do you know any names of the the food vendors that are gonna be there? Um, I don't know exactly what food vendors will be there yet. Uh, we do have quite a large variety of food trucks in this uh, this county, and it seems to be ever growing. Uh, last year, I know that Brisket Barn was there, and that was pretty popular. They have um, a restaurant called Jack's over in Rapid River, and then they also do the food truck. So, And if you have, okay, so people that haven't visited the UP and have not stopped at Jack's along US 2, put that on your bucket list to say you've actually stopped at Jack's, because going back to what we talked to about in the preview before we came out live on the show, my is, dad used to stop it. Is that where the, the property was bought? No. Okay. No, 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 no. I could actually take you to the place. That's another story. Okay. It's <laughs> a story for another show. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but we also see uh, we now have WZMQ Channel 19 is coming to the UP Ice Fishing Show as well. So we're getting more and more vendors as we go. I know Sarah's excited about bringing all these people on from uh, Blake's Baits to Blades themselves, Bait and Tackle. Um you know, with you being there, and you're going to have a booth there at the show to talk to people, so stop by, see Morgan. She's going to be there all weekend. Um, well, what if we want to get a booth? Do we need to, who, who do we need to contact about getting a booth for the show? Because obviously, you, you've probably got a few spaces left where we can squeeze somebody in, right? Yeah, uh, the Daily Press would be who you would contact if you're looking to be a vendor and have a space, and they would get you set up. Um, let's see... Do you want a contact info? Sure. Sure. Uh, specifically. Uh, uh, maybe I shouldn't give you somebody's. Give them their personal number. Wake yeah. them up. Yeah, give, give them their personal <laughs> cell phone number. How about the UP, uh, UP Press, their website? I can, I can give you the Daily Press there. phone number. There you go. That's 906-786-2021. All right. There you go. There you go. That'll get you in touch with the right people, get you some booth space, get some more vendors up there. Um, what else, Morgan? Uh, to me, let's get a little personal on, on Morgan here. Uh, we know, obviously, Caitlin does a little bit of fishing and with some hunting. A little bit. Uh, <laughs> what about Morgan? How did, how did she get into uh, where she is today? 
Yeah, well, um, so I'm from the UP, uh, born and raised UPer. I went to NMU. Uh, I got my degree in hospitality management, and I was the COVID class, so the worst time to get that degree. So uh, two years later, um, my significant other and I decided that we wanted to move back up to this area, and um, here we are in Delta County, and uh, so far I'm absolutely loving it. My job was uh, posted in a newspaper <laughs> clipping, and uh, that was the only place it was posted, so... How's that for the UP? Um, you, yeah, so I've been newspaper. the event coordinator for two years now, and in those two years, I've put on an ice fishing derby uh, We twice. We doubled our numbers, so this past year we um, hit 105 participants, which was exciting, and we're hoping to expand that. Um, the ice fishing derby is called the Big Freeze, and we're hoping that this coming winter, it can be like a weekend long event. So, yeah. That's that awesome. awesome. If they do that, I'm going to nominate Danny to come up and do a polar dip. <laughs> okay, okay, so why do I get thrown under the bus for all these exciting things? Because you make me go check the ice because I'm the bigger one. You're right. So that way you're going to do the polar okay, dip. Okay, I'm on it. <laughs> oh, we, we got a shout out uh, on, on our live uh, from Sarah that Nathan says Caitlin can catch bigger walleyes than Mike. Is that true? <laughs> I thought that. <laughs> That's funny. Right? So, Morgan, do you do yeah. any fishing, ice fishing, hunting? What, what's your background in the outdoors? Yeah, uh, a little bit. So, I um, grew up in a family with all girls, and my dad wanted sons for sure. And so, we definitely do the hunting and the fishing things, um, summer and wintertime fishing. I obviously during college didn't really um do it as much i was deep in my studies and waitressing and then uh yeah now that we are settled i'm starting to get my toes wet and hunting and fishing again but um i definitely don't go fishing twice a week <laughs> <laughs> well it, i don't know what people would do <laughs> it sounds like caitlin needs to get you out at uh, uh call it an afternoon business lunch it's product testing. <laughs> well, yeah, there you go. It's product, product testing. There you go. Yeah, yeah. product testing. Right? Morgan can help with Good that. Verbiage. Right? Good verbiage. So you're picking up a I, little bit of hunting now, you said. What, what's your, your favorite way to get out in the woods and hunt? Is it with a bow, with a rifle? And what, what do you go after? A uh, whitetail. Whitetail. Okay. Yes. Deer hunter. Yeah. There you go. Now, yeah, I'm a deer hunter. Now, okay. now do, you, do you hunt back around home, or do you hunt around Escanaba? A little bit of both. Okay. We'll talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, we definitely could. Right? So, um, okay, so we do have a couple questions. Um, one, where'd it go? I just lost it. Give me two seconds. I tell you what, let's take a break. All right. Take our second break. We'll come back. We'll find the question. Danny can ask that. Yep. We'll jump back in that, with that. So we're going to step outside. We'll take our next break. We'll be right back after this. PSC Archery has always dominated the speed category. Now, the most revolutionary cam system ever to hit the market has perfected the shooting experience. Introducing PSE's Evolve Cam System, featuring extremely high let-off capabilities and the smoothest draw cycle in history. No other cam system has ever delivered this level of total comfort and total control. Experience PSE. Experience performance. Welcome back. We're back. Danny found his question yeah. he before, so we got a couple questions we're going to throw here at Caitlin. Right. So, Caitlin, uh, on the beaver lures, do you have like packages? If I want packages of spoons or or uh, for crappie or for walleye or like pike, a, like a sort do you have a, a pack or or something I can buy multiples of for that specific species? Gotcha. So I don't at the moment. Um, I'll have a new website here, though, in about maybe like a month, and we'll have a lot more options on there. Well, I tell you what, when you get that new website, you let us know here at the Up North Journal. We'd be glad to pass on the information. I'm sure Adam will be on top of it, our fishing expert. And also, do you have a called Bloody Nose? <laughs> yeah, so that is um, one of our color combos, the bloody nose. Is that in a, um, is that in a spoon? 
Yes, so we we have that color pattern in all of our lures. And, okay, so what? You got to check it out. Okay, <laughs> he's, he's, I'm looking for he's it. He's finding it right now. You're trying to. So, like, the bloody nose pattern for fishing has been around forever, and we just made a version of it where, like, the red actually looks like blood, so it's pretty cool. Is that the blood at the tip going into a white with kind of like blood splatters towards the end? Yep, yep. And there you have it, folks, a bloody nose lure. And that one worked actually really well um, this ice season for walleye. Okay. Most of the lures that you're you're making or and selling, it, it, is it hard water or soft water? Where, where's your specialty at? Um, both. both. So, yeah, so we've got lures for year-round fishing. Um, pretty much all of your ice fishing jigs you can use in open water. Um, not all of the open water j or spoons, though, you can use ice fishing. Okay, so, gotcha. Um, yeah, we've got a variety okay. for all the seasons. Yeah. And Morgan, uh, Adam, our our fishing pro staffer on Up North Journal Fishing side, actually was up in the bay. He caught a, a nice size while I took a great picture and actually visited Escanaba, got it, and shared it. So that was thank you to, to you guys over there. Uh, but do you get out on the hard water? yet or you sticking to hunting whitetails so yeah i have uh stumbled out into the bay uh twice this past winter um but we had a really mild winter so i was um skeptical to venture too far uh, just because i'm pretty unfamiliar with the territory but um that's something i would like to eventually uh experience more of i know that that's a a culture <laughs> up here a lot of people are really into ice fishing and um yeah it's a uh, fun to do i have gone inland lake ice fishing growing up but um going out on the bay on lake michigan is a, a different animal you know i i can respect that uh, we got saginaw bay here and i've been on the saginaw river that's that's the closest i've come to getting out on the big big water and it scares the devil out of me. It really does. It's, I don't know. You hear the horror stories of it. I know uh, Adam's probably laughing at me right now. Right, right. Yeah, Adam's laughing. Uh, Caitlin, um, comment yeah. from William McConnell. Beaver Lords works great in soft water for me in Lake Erie. So, with that being said, knowing your lures get to Lake Erie, where's the furthest you've sent your lures? That's a good question. Um, I'm not really sure on that. All right. Um, well, I know yeah. Bill, though. Bill's an awesome guy. He actually runs a charter um, on Lake Erie, and they just absolutely pound the walleye. Do you so. work with, uh, with a lot of the, the charter captains supplying them? I mean, I got to imagine they're they're burning through uh, tackle, you know, a lot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, those are the guys that are out there every day. Um, so I want to do, like, every spring a good, like, discount or some type of deal for charter captains and then we just did one um this spring for them so i'm excited nice. to see how that goes. yeah well as you know working together within the community you know yeah. it, it 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 just comes around full circle you help them they help you it's uh that's nice yeah absolutely and, and morgan how is it important uh small town community like escanaba which is a small town in essence but What's, what's the community like when working like you, working with Caitlin, uh, getting to know her and other vendors in your area, working together to, to get to a, a show like this in November? Um, what was the question? So, the que so how, is it, how important is it for you to have a special relationship with the vendors that you're in a small community type setting that you have up there in Escanaba? You know, it's, it's re really important, isn't yeah. it? It's vital, yeah. And I mean, it's easy to do when you're in a really small community to like learn who's who and um yeah everybody is uh it's small town usa for sure everyone knows everybody and um i heard the legends of caitlin beaver and uh obviously i have uh, gotten to know her through like the events that i've put on and um obviously at the expo and whatnot and uh yeah it it is really cool and then if i you know do decide to go fishing i know exactly who to ask <laughs> but um yeah it uh it really is vital and you know having things like this expo to bring people from outside of the area in and show them how hospitable the people of this area are is really really important 
to not only like the hunting and fishing businesses but restaurants and hotels and stuff and there really is a, quite a variety of things to do in this area so and everybody relies on everybody you know i mean what helps one right. business helps another person well but, that's that's you know. kind of what we're you know that's you know our partnership with sarah over at the the press um kind of promoting that like having you two on tonight uh, who we have on next month, and, and so on, all the way up to the show. And before you know it, by the time we get to the show, we're all... Uh, I know, know everybody up there. Yeah, we're going to know, you know, we're going to know all the vendors and having you two on board. And, and, and Caitlin, really? You're already a legend? And, <laughs> a legend. Uh, Morgan, tell us some of those those legendary tales you've heard. Or better yet, <laughs> save them. And we'll, you know, but... Uh, yeah. Right? So, uh... Well, if you follow her social media, you you'll see what I mean. The pictures are quite impressive. She uh, she puts those lures to work. <laughs> which, Definitely puts them to work. All right. Which okay. So that that's a good segue into this picture I'm showing right now on Facebook. You have a bunch of blades laid out, and they are literally glowing. So, what's up with g glowing blades? I guess. Yeah, so um, mainly for salmon fishermen, but you can they're great for deep water fishing or nighttime fishing, um, murky water too. And it just helps to um, catch a fish's eye, I guess, from further away um, or in like deep water fishing, especially salmon fishing when you're, you know, 80 feet down there, there's not much sunlight. So did you, did you see that done somewhere else? Did you think about it or just from yeah so there are um other lure companies that do make glow lures um and i love fishing so that's just something i really wanted to add to the collection i guess yeah so with a glow glow uh lure glow in the dark kind of what you refer to it as or a glowing lure it's got to be charged somehow. Uh, what what type of light do we use for that if we were to ha buy one of those from here? Is it just natural light? Yes, yeah, so you can really use any type of light. Um, the stronger the light, the better. Um, you can use sunlight, phone light, flashlight. Um, we do send out a free UV LED keychain light with any glow order on the website. Okay. Um, and those work really well to charge them up. So if, if it needs to be charged, I got... I, I, pull it out of my box i'm out there on the ice and i'm going to charge it up how long do i need to charge this for to make it get uh, bright yeah so you can charge it up for a few seconds and it's going to last you a few hours really? um wow. off of an hour charge it'll last up to eight hours wow wow yeah, okay crazy. um and, and it, then, will, it will dim but it, it'll still glow sure. okay not only for blades but you do those also on jig heads Yep, so all of our lures, we have um, glow options. And then on all of our lures, we also add sparkles. So that's kind of something I wanted to make my own twist on, I guess. And um, when the sun's like beating down on the water and um, you're bringing your lure through it, you can really see how much the sparkles reflect the sunlight. Really? So that adds, yeah, add some added attraction. And then I also think it looks like fish scales in the sun. So that's pretty cool, too. Wow. There you go. Innovative. Hey, eh? She's thinking out of the box. Well, who would think about sparkles? Right? Yeah. It's, you know, you, you're thinking uh, something different, something that's going to set it apart from everybody else's yeah. stuff, you know, and that's going to make it work better as well. You know, it's not just because it's flashy. It's because it works. Right. So. Exactly. Uh, so... Tell you what, she sounds like she's busy doing uh, R and D. Yeah, right. <laughs> product right. development and product Very testing. Um, <laughs> so next winter, we're actually going to be in fifty four Meyer stores. So I'm super excited about that. Congratulations. Thank you. So, is it going to be exclusive to Michigan, or is it going to be a couple of different states? Um, so it'll be a couple different states. Um, it's going to be their, they call it their, um, lake shore stores. Okay. So we so probably won't sit here. Fishing areas. We might sit down here. Probably see it up, up near the bay, I would imagine. Um, we might see them by the bay. We might be seen by the bridge over Port Huron. Yeah, Marine Saginaw. City. Yeah. Algonac. Right. Okay. Sure. That'd be interesting to see. That'd be cool. Yeah. yeah I'm excited. We see them in the store. We'll have to take a picture and say, Hey, we, we found them here, here at our place. So that's cool. Question for you, Morgan. Uh, we know we were talking about bringing more vendors to the to the show. Are you looking for any vendors 
in any specialties? Um, so last year, uh, we had primarily hunting and ice fishing, but there were a couple of people that had, um, like, UP-themed stuff or Michigan-themed stuff, um, things that were handmade, like, like, quilts or, you know, wooden bowls or knives or whatever, things that are kind of more attuned to the nature lover, but not necessarily something that you need to go hunt or ice fish. And actually, I think we, when we had Sarah on uh, a couple weeks ago, we were showing some of the pictures from last year, showing videos, and I think you had uh, an artist there and... Um, uh, decoy carver? Taxidermy. Taxidermy, decoy carver. Yeah, he was selling first is what yeah, he was. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. you know, like, that's awesome. Yeah, there was somebody making signs that could be, like, custom for, your, like, log cabins and, uh, you know, have your family's name or whatever you wanted written on the sign. And um, I actually bought one of those hand-painted lures, um, and they are beautiful. It's art, honestly. I have it sitting on my desk, and it is, it's a lure that you can actually use ice fishing, um, obviously, a, a decoy, rather. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, yeah, it's beautiful it's a bluegill and it's so colorful you yeah. know speaking of of lures Danny and i kind of we toss this around and i'm just going to throw it out there so you got the show coming up you know and, and Danny and i we we've been up to tip up town that's in east Tawas, right and then where we went houghton lake houghton lake well, well tip up town is houghton lake uh we were at perch perch fest perch, perch, fest. perch fest they they've got they've got little badges or buttons with a design on them every year Caitlin, did you ever think about possibly making a lure just specifically for the expo and selling as a collector's item? Yes. Yeah, so we actually do occasionally do like um, logo lures or custom business lures. I was thinking about making maybe like 50 up for some raffles. So we'll see. Cool. I tell you what, if you did a 2023 UP Expo lure and then started that trend mm -hmm. i think you'd, i think you'd have a hit just you know don't have to put yeah, a hook on we don't have to put a hook on it we don't need some kid running around with his uh, <laughs> don't need that hanging it in there somebody's ear right <laughs> but uh yeah we're all uh, but yeah that would be awesome we talked we threw the idea at sarah it's, and now we have somebody that actually makes lures there you so go an idea yeah. to her that's Kings. right yeah so morgan uh what do we got going on I know we're talking way out into November, November 3rd to the 5th, over at the UP State Fairgrounds. It starts on Friday, ends on Sunday. Um, but we got some uh, things coming up during the, the spring and summer. When is actually the busiest time for Escanaba? When, 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 would you, when would you say, is, oh, it's the busy season? Or is it actually all year round up in Escanaba? So definitely summertime is like, the busy season um we've got concerts farmers markets races going on there's like i said lots of car shows um there's different uh little festivals here and there we've got boogie fest and nama music fest and the northern lights music fest and um kind of kind of a good time um waterfront art festival was something i went to last year and really enjoyed that was in august and there's a marina festival so i mean summer is definitely the busy time and that's when it's very hot and everyone wants to be right on little bay to knock so um that's definitely the busiest aside from that obviously fall and the fall colors is quite busy and then in the winter things definitely slow down people aren't uh brave in the cold as much <laughs> i have to say everybody up there you brave the cold yeah right and the deep snow <laughs> nobody <laughs> likes it not even us <laughs> <laughs> exactly so uh with that being said folks if you get a chance go on over to facebook uh visit escanaba has a website at visit escanaba.com they've also got a facebook page caitlin over at beaver lures has both a website and a facebook page go over there check her out go over check out the website as well but we're going to come up on our last break and that means it's time for us to ask you some questions from us all right we're gonna step outside we take our last break we come back we'll wrap up the show we'll be right back after this
Acceleration is part of PSE's DNA. PSE pioneered the speed movement. Now they've developed the Vapor category to help you find the most powerful bows on the market to fit you. High speed equates to intense power and building the momentum you need to be successful. Are you a Vapor shooter? Find out at PSEArchery.com. Welcome back, last segment of the show. Uh, we kind of wrapped up all the questions that are coming in, unless we see any more pop in here real quick. But uh, we get to that part of the show where we, we got our, our four questions that we throw to everybody that's new to the show. So I'm going to turn Danny loose. I'll try to keep him under control as best I can, but he doesn't bite. Right, exactly. And, you know, it, it, again, thank you for both of you coming on the show tonight. Well, obviously, we're talking about the UP Ice Fishing Expo and Hunting Expo coming in November 3 through 5. But we talked all about that, but now let's ask some our questions to you. So we'll start with Morgan. So... And then you can answer, Caitlin, after Morgan. And you got to so, come up with a different answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not, not one of those, well, what she said. No, that can't happen. So, all right. So, Morgan, you're traveling around the UP. You're doing your visit Escanaba duties. Maybe you're running around or anything like that from town to town. Maybe you're going over to a, a new event. What are you listening to on the radio? <laughs> um... <laughs> You mean like genre or station? Yeah, yeah, genre. Yeah, go with genre. Genre? Yep. Gosh, you know what? So Spotify does this thing where it just it tells you your like your playlists. Mm hmm Yep. And my like end of the year wrap up was that my music listening patterns are pretty erratic. So pretty much everything except for, you know, Screamo or Opera. All right. So, one end I can't of the really give you an order. answer. Well, okay. So, so if okay, so then if you were to actually push a button on a radio station and go, I want to listen to rock, country. What would you be listening to? Pop, Justin Bieber. So the oh my no, um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that young. Uh, so I guess probably country would be my default. Old or new? Depends what mood I'm in. But I mean, lately I've been listening to a lot of Keith Urban. Okay. Getting prepped for this concert we've got so, July 21st and 22nd. There you go. There you go. Good segue into that throw out, right? Uh, all right, Caitlin, what are you listening to on the radio? Yeah, I definitely have heard some more uh, Keith Urban on the radio lately. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, I definitely listen to a lot of country and rock. I okay. So have yeah. either of you seen Keith Urban in concert? No, I haven't. No, not yet. Not yet. He, he does a great concert. I've seen him a few times down here, and he does a good heck of a show. So it'll be a good one. Uh, okay. So you both are traveling. You're listening to your respective musics, Justin Bieber included. Don't lie. Um, you got to have a snack. What's your go-to snack that you're going to have on your way, on your travels? Morgan. Mm, trail mix or jerky. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Trail mix or jerky? Pretzels, Everybody goes sure. protein. Everybody likes. There's a lot of jerky that we get on the show. What'd you say, Caitlin? Yeah, I said dots pretzels for sure. Dots pretzels. <laughs> I'm addicted to those. Okay, there you go. All right. Good, 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 good. Okay, so we'll reverse it now. Caitlin will go first. So Mike and Dan are coming up, and Caitlin is going to make us a meal that she says. Mike and Dan, you guys have got to have this. What are you going to cook us? Mm, maybe um, some salmon that has been soaking in brown sugar and soy sauce. Uh, and then put it on the smoker. It's pretty good. I had something similar, but it wasn't done on a smoker. So, yeah, I'm there. <laughs> That's good. Right? <laughs> uh, all right, Morgan. What's your meal of that for Mike and Dan to have? So in our house, pretty much twice a week we have venison burgers. So I would say you're probably looking at a, a deluxe venison burger with uh, hand sliced fries in the air fryer. I'm liking it. That sounds right. Man, the, the unfortunate of doing this segment is Mike and I are both now drooling and we're yeah. hungry. I always mm -hmm. go. I always wrap up the show hungry. But right? the air fryer has been the newest best friend for me and Nancy. Yeah, we we use the air fryer. A, a lot of stuff. 
You can't go wrong. Uh, Denise that. has one. I don't have one yet, but I get it. You will. Oh, yeah. You will. It's gonna it, happen. It's the bomb. dot com, man. It, it, you can put a grilled cheese in there. Really? Yeah. Yeah. But when you put a grilled cheese in there, you got to put a toothpick front through it because if you don't, the bread starts floating and flying around. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it, it blows pretty good in there, you know. It, it gets a good breeze. Oh, okay, I get it. Yeah. Right, right, so right. it blows stuff around. All right, all right, Caitlin. Um, so we have an amazing salmon, smoked salmon at that. Um, but now we're going to sit down around a fire. You're going to tell us why, besides you're a legend, obviously, in the UP already at your age. But <laughs> what story are you going to tell us that resonates with you, uh, past experience, that say, you know, Mike and Dan, you got to hear this story. Funny, uh, to the heart, whatever story. What would that story be? Um, hmm, that's a good question. I can think of a kind of a, an interesting one from... Um, both season two years ago um so me and my boyfriend lucas love hunting um mainly bow hunting and we don't have cell service out there so i go and drop drop him off um with the wheeler at his spot and then i go to my spot and then at the end of the night i go and get him and i got like a half mile walk alone back to my wheeler and so i go and pick him up and he's like caitlin you're not gonna believe what i saw and I'm like, what? And um, he said a seven point buck came running out through his pile and then he heard a bunch of crashing coming through the woods and there were two wolves chasing it. And one of the wolves stuck by his tree stand and circled him, just growling at him. And he was like yelling at it, trying to, trying to get it to run off. And it came back two separate times. And he's like, all I was thinking was that you make it back to the four wheeler. <laughs> Wow. But yeah, so that was kind of freaky, but um, that's like one of the most, I guess, interesting experiences with a wolf that we've had. There you go. So well, let me ask you this, okay, because I've hunted at Danny's place, two, was it last, two years right, ago? Right. Two years ago. No, last, last year. year last, last year. year. Bow season. And, mm-hmm. you know, we've had these stories and conversations back and forth about the wolves up there. And, and I got to hear them, you know, cut loose one night, but... I'm thinking when I'm up there, I've got my CPL completely legal to carry while you're bow hunting as long as you have a CPL license. I would be carrying a sidearm with me if I had wolves, especially after that. After circling the tree that you're in, I would think twice about going out with just my bow. <laughs> See, look, we were both under the age of 21. I right. still am. Right. So we're just out there with our bows. Yeah. No cell service. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> Right? You just have to it, run it, faster than him. <laughs> make sure you hit him in the knee and run. Um, yeah. But that is a legitimate thought that goes through your head. Whether you see him or oh, don't, yeah. you, you literally, I've been there plenty of times sitting there Concerned. going, okay, they're sounding off and I'm up a tree and now I got to get down. It's a great mm-hmm. feeling. So, the Morgan. Thing, oh, go ahead, Caitlin. <laughs> I was going to say the thing was like, like a few days leading up to that day we were finding like these nasty big like hairballs around our bait pile and we were like what is this from and i mean that's clearly it was just wolves in the area it's crazy were they taking deer down is that what the hair was from um it was just like a nasty looking hairball i don't know what it was from (laughs) so on our one of our roads up there Within 100 yards, we had four big piles of coyote poop, fresh, okay. from the night before. It, it, that's You can see the tracks on the road, mm-hmm. running right down the middle of the road. So, yeah, it's a great feeling. So, all right, Morgan, what's your story? Well, I was going to go for a heartthrob, but now I, I don't know. Maybe I'll match Caitlin's. I've got Are a you? crazy wolf story, too. Do you? Yeah. Well, he wouldn't believe. Yeah. Let's hear it. I got a lot of wolf stories, um, but two years ago as well, <laughs> I shot a 10 point buck and I was walking back to the camp and it's probably like eh, maybe a half a mile walk. I'm in the kitchen. I say, dad, I just shot a 10 point buck. I said, we got to go get it. I turn around, look out the kitchen window and I'm not kidding you. There were two mature male wolves 
following exactly where my footprints were back to where I just walked from. I said, Dad, grab your pistol and like, let's go now because those wolves are going to find that deer before I do. And that was, not going to lie, the biggest buck I've ever shot. So my heart was in my stomach and I was like, let's race. Like, we need to get out there yesterday. Um, but luckily, uh, we did recover the deer. It was, uh, it had only ran about 50 yards and um luckily the wolves didn't find it first or they were watching us <laughs> that's, that's freaky yeah i tell yeah. you what that I, nobody if nobody's experienced they have no clue but when you're out there and either you see the wolves you hear the wolves the coyotes even bears uh and, and you know we got mountain lion too that runs up there that's even a even more of a weird thought that you're gonna get jumped from a tree and not even know it but yeah it's it's a different type of thought you you're out there yeah. listening to those wolves and and i've had neighbors up there she's been walking her dogs and mm -hmm. all of a sudden you know you get that feeling yeah something's kind of watching you look over your shoulder and they're 100 200 yards behind you coming down the road you know yep. following you yeah looking for dinner right well, so i totally get it i get it i've been charged by a, a coyote i come out of a tree stand one night and uh, a, a coyote actually charged me within come got within about 20 yards before he finally figured out that it's like oh that's not an animal that's that's a hunter <laughs> and turn around but it, it makes the hair in the back of your neck stand up all right so who knows russell ralph i have seen him uh, okay. i think i never seen okay him. so here's the mother his comment is, ah, the classic Uber one-up hunting story. <laughs> He's just kidding. <laughs> I knew I should have gone with the heartthrob. <laughs> and Caitlin's going, I knew I, sh I should have went last. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, but those are our, our four questions that we ask all our newbie interviewers. So it, it, we just like to make it light, hard, <laughs> fun. So, like sitting around a campfire. That's right. So, <coughs> okay. So, one last time, where can we go, Morgan, to find out more about November 3rd through the 5th, the UP Ice Fishing and Hunting Expo? I would encourage you to either call the Daily Press or to check out our website. We will be updating the information as we get it. Visit escanaba.com. And Caitlin, where can we go to find out more about Beaver's Lures? Yes, so we've got a Facebook and an Instagram, and we also have a website, just beaverslures.com. All right, right there it is. There you go, folks, live on the screen. So, once again, thank you both very much for coming on the show. Uh, we expect to see both of you there in November. Absolutely. And hopefully we talk prior to that, before that, so... I'll tell you what, uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap up the show. Uh, hang on for just a few minutes. We'll, we'll chat right after we wrap up here. Uh, but for those of you who are listening over on iTunes, if you're listening to the podcast on iTunes, make sure you give us a review. That helps people who support us in return. And if you're listening to the podcast, once again, as Danny's always said before, you need to watch the live shows. You can catch us on YouTube later in the week, or you can stop in over here on Facebook and just hit the play button and you get to watch the whole show, but you miss what we talk about in the breaks. You got, you got, folks, you got to watch the live show to see what we talk about in the breaks. If not on live Facebook, go over to YouTube. But uh, usually by the uh, Sunday night, I'll have it posted on YouTube. You'll see it as a live season, uh, as a premiere for us on YouTube. And when you're over there, make sure you give us a, a subscribe button there. Uh, next week. Next week, we've got the man, the myth. Facebook jail's favorite, Lincoln Roan. That's right. Are we going to be able to get through without getting kicked off the internet? Uh, I think we got a better shot than Randy Stoppenhagen. Yeah, around, so. there we go. we got a couple guys that we like to talk to that sometimes get us in a little bit of trouble. <laughs> right? So, But he is the owner of Packer Max, and we will have him on next week's show. Yeah, and he just made a huge announcement for Packer Max. Yes, he and did. And we'll, uh, we'll, we'll be talk, talking about that we'll next week. We'll definitely make sure to talk about that next week. So that's going to do it for us this week. And as well, go over to our social media pages and smash that like button as well. Uh, give us a, a like, follow, share. Share the show for us. It helps us. It's going to help these young ladies in, in their endeavors as well. So that's going to do it for us this week. We'll be back again next Wednesday night, same time, 730, right here on Facebook. This episode was brought to you by PSE Archery. Deer Camp Coffee. Buck Bates. JPO Game Call. The Island Armory. Hacker Max. Sunrise Archery, 
and C3 Better the Hunt technology. Thanks for listening and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.